Hi, I'm Drew from Genetically Modified Skeptic, and you're about to learn just how easy it is to come off as a legitimate organization within the world of alternative medicine. Center for Aromatherapy Research and Education. Sounds pretty legitimate on the surface. If you're already a skeptic, you probably already have doubts about aromatherapy, but to the average person, this sounds pretty credible. So let's dig into their website and judge their legitimacy for ourselves. The Center for Aromatherapy Research and Education, or CARE, is a non-secular educational organization dedicated to assembling research and disseminating information on the healing properties and therapeutic applications of essential oils. This is accomplished by the sponsorship of seminars, hands-on workshops, and the publications of various books and DVDs. Something already strikes me here is that they say they're dedicated to assembling research but don't mention anything about collecting peer-reviewed material. But before I jump to any conclusions, let's take a look at their research section. Okay, awesome, there's an abstract right here at the top, a statistical validation of raindrop technique. By the way, the raindrop technique is the primary therapeutic technique used by the people who are certified by this organization. Now back to the abstract. During the past 10 years, raindrop technique has become a widely used therapeutic protocol throughout the United States. Numerous anecdotal accounts relate the significant and substantive benefits generated by this procedure. Raindrop technique has been used to ameliorate cases of viral infection, kyphosis, scoliosis, chronic fatigue syndrome, and many other conditions. As its popularity and usage have increased, a small group of aromatherapists has questioned the use of the procedure and its reliance on undiluted therapeutic-grade essential oils. So, in an effort to statistically validate the benefit, or lack thereof, of the raindrop technique, I circulated a questionnaire in late 2001 among several thousand aromatherapists, health practitioners, and users of essential oils to poll those who receive raindrop and those who perform it. This study summarizes the experiences of more than 14,000 sessions of raindrop. All right, let's skip down just a little bit here. Receivers reported their raindrop experiences to be positive, 97%, pleasant, 98%, resulted in healing, 16%, felt better afterwards, 98%, improved health, 89%, and improved emotional state, 86%. 99.9% of receivers said they would receive raindrop again. So he did a survey, and a bunch of people said they felt better afterward. That's not research. Asking people if they feel better afterward is not a valid way of testing a treatment. I mean, where's the control group and where's the test against placebo? If real medical researchers relied on this method, we'd still be drilling holes in people's heads to treat mental illness. The plural of anecdote is not data. Also, take a look at the end of the abstract. As for negative responses, 1 in 168 considered raindrop to be unpleasant. 1 in 489 considered it a negative experience. Only 1 in 1023 said they would not receive raindrop again. Unpleasant experiences reported in the order of frequency were burning sensation on skin, skin rashes, nausea, headaches, and tiredness. Most identified these as symptoms of a detoxification process. All of these were reported as temporary, often followed by positive results including relief of various symptoms. Most identified these symptoms as a result of a detoxification process. How do they know for sure that the participants were detoxing? I mean, did they test for that somehow? No? Then it can't be asserted with any credibility. There's always an out for naturopathic doctors, isn't there? Kind of like religion. When something good happens in your life, you attribute it to God's blessings. But when something bad happens, you just say it's God trying to teach you a lesson. It seems like with raindrop, if you see positive results, you praise the oils. But if you see negative results, it's just your body detoxing. Either way, you see the end result the way you want to see it, whether it's reality or not. But let's not spend all our time on this article. What else do they have? Hmm. Just looks like books and DVDs. The Aroma Freedom Technique. The Battle for Health is Over pH. Biology of Belief. Oh, here's one by the guy who wrote the article we just looked at. The chemistry of essential oils made simple. God's love manifest in molecules. What the fuck? Can you guess what I have a problem with? It's not the spiritual aspects of the book, because I won't even go there right now. It's that books aren't research. They're not subject to peer review and can therefore skate by making totally baseless claims really easily. What are this author's qualifications anyway? His PhD is in geophysics, and he's out there publishing books about chemistry and medicine. That doesn't fly in the real medical community. All right, let's shift our focus to the certifications that this organization grants. CARE's complete certification program consists of 23 requirements, 164 hours of training and testing, at which point one is eligible to become a board-certified raindrop specialist and licensed spiritual healer. On the surface, it seems like the hour system is set up much like a college degree, with a bachelor's degree equaling about 120 credits. 
So 12 to 18 credits should equal about a semester's worth of work, right? Nope, not even close. For example, requirement number one is to participate in one CARE hands-on seminar on applied VitaFlex, and it gives you four hours of credit. But this is a flat four hours. An actual college course that gives you four hours of credit means that you're required to complete four hours of that class per week minimum. I think this curriculum is duping people into thinking they're getting a college level education when that's absolutely not the case. So what does one of their certifications give you? It pretty much just allows you to practice VitaFlex and Raindrop Technique and tack on CCI to your name. That doesn't mean anything in the professional world, though. Here's where it gets really sketchy. In order to even be accepted into their program, you have to be a Young Living distributor. That way, receiving this certification ensures that the student will keep ordering from Young Living exclusively, thereby really driving up Young Living's profits. It's nothing more than just another Young Living marketing scheme. Even with all these obvious signs of this organization being total quackery, thousands of people still buy into their claims. This website can be picked apart by anyone who's scientifically literate, but unfortunately, not enough people out there are. That means that taking advantage of vulnerable people with obvious bullshit like this is too damn easy. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, go ahead and do that and it'll be greatly appreciated. You can also follow me on Twitter at GM Skeptic. And until next time, stay skeptical.